Now we go to financial statements classification. So we have uh, what are the costs that are recognized in the statement of financial position. We have there uh, inventories. So inventories are costs, uh, are manufacturing costs that are forming part of the statement of financial position or the balance sheet because they would only be recognized as an expense when they are uh, when the unit of inventory is actually out of the out of the company or when sold or lost or stolen now income statement what are the costs that are present on income statement so we have cost of goods sold uh, and operating expense cost of goods sold are manufacturing costs that uh, manufacturing cost of units that already exited the uh, the company so these are product costs of products that are already sold while operating expense uh, marketing and other expenses these are period costs in general so we recognize them as cost when they are incurred regardless of when the unit that pertains to them is sold Cost classification for predicting cost behavior. What is cost behavior? This refers to how a cost will react or respond to changes in the business activity. So, cost behavior would be the uh, reaction of the cost to a cost driver. Variable costs, these are types of costs that, uh, that increase in total as a result of uh, an increase in activity or volume of units produced so this has a direct relationship with the volume or the activity to which it pertains to this cost would be further discussed in variable costing the next module of our discussion well fixed costs these are costs that does not change regardless of the change in activity so whether there would be an increase or decrease in activity there would be no change in there would be no change in the total fixed costs so when we say that an item is semi variable it is a cost that contains both fixed and variable elements so we would have a separate chapter for semi variable costs on discussing how they would be separate because ultimately a semi variable cost uh, has a fixed component and a variable component we need to separate them so that we can be a we can we can be we, we are able to I identify the movement of fixed costs uh, fixed cost and variable cost especially the variable cost on that element on the types of inventory uh, costs can be classified especially for manufacturing costs uh, manufacturing companies we have three types of inventory we have raw materials these are the items that are not yet put to production work in process inventory these are the items that are currently into production but uh, for financial statement purposes they are uh, they are classified as work in process because they are still in process when the inventory is declared well, finished goods inventory are inventory items that are already finished and awaiting sale. Now, for merchandising companies, we only have merchandise inventory because the finished product is sold is purchased from another supplier. Traceability to cost objective. When we say that an item is a direct cost, it can be economically traced to a single cost object these are direct materials or direct labor so for manufacturing costs while indirect costs these are costs that are not directly traceable to the cost object because uh, because they are they cannot be specifically attributable at some extent to the cost object example of this would be manufacturing overhead we have now cost classification according to managerial influence when we say that the cost is controllable the management or the person in charge of the cost can control the increase or decrease of the cost that would be incurred an example of this is uh, 
if uh, let's say uh, the number of hours that would be spent by the employees in a day in the department can be cut short or long by the manage manager by the person responsible for them uh, what else mm, for example uh, of course uh, the management can control the number of units the number of raw materials to be put to production non-controllable costs would be the costs that are attributable to the uh, to the department in which the manager or the person in charge of the department has no direct influence with in controlling that cost what is an example of that uh, the depreciation of the equipment the manager of the department in which the equipment is used cannot control the depreciation costs used for planning and control when we say that the cost is a standard cost this is a predetermined cost uh, that is usually our target that what that's why it's a standard usually these are expressed in terms of per unit costs uh, when we when we say that the cost is standard that is the standard per unit price that we need to incur for that uh, for that product when it is already lumped or summed up for the total number of units to be produced on that certain certain uh, certain time period that would already be a budgeted cost the, that's the next item now when we say absorption costing this is also called full costing method this uh, this includes all manufacturing costs as part of the uh, unit cost of a product this is different from direct costing or variable costing wherein uh, wherein fixed cost or fixed charges are recognized as period costs so we would have a separate discussion on direct and absorption costing uh, information cost that would be cost of obtaining information ordering cost that is uh, a co the cost to place a single order so regardless of the number of inventory out of pocket costs these are costs that must be uh, that must be expensed outright or must have uh, a cash outlay now we go to cost classifications on a time frame perspective when we say that the cost is committed it means you have already an agreement as to the as to the incurrence of this cost for example uh, if you have already studied about option contracts uh, you would promise to pay after 30 days so uh, if that 30 day period lapses you would at, when you arrive at that time you need to pay for that obligation what is an example of this other example of this uh, if you have a lease contract that is good for two years so it means you will pay for the lease uh, monthly for example it's ten thousand a month for two years so next this month you will pay ten thousand next month you would have to pay for that ten thousand because you have already committed to that costs to that cost rather when we say that the cost is discretionary you can decide on whether to spend it or not for example if you incur a, an advertising cost of 10,000 per month because you engage uh, you in, you engage uh, you engage a a PR group or or, or, or an ad company to uh, to air your uh, commercial on a monthly basis then this month you can have them for for ten thousand the next month you may opt not to uh, not to air your commercial so what else in a, is an example of that uh, your subscription in in for example Netflix it is a discretionary cost because you have not paid for the entire year so for if you have selected if is there is there a one-year option for for netflix then if you have selected the one-year option 
you would have to pay for it on a monthly basis even if it is cheaper but if you have selected the monthly basis you would have only to pay uh, on a month to month basis you can stop it next month and then you would not incur the same cost anymore next would be uh, cost classification according to time period this would be historical and future cost the difference is the when they were in when they would be incurred historical costs are already incurred this would be significant because uh, when we decide on well on decisions on whether <clears throat> we would save or not historical costs are costs of the past of the past which we should not consider anymore because they are already incurred when the cost is incurred we cannot anymore we should not anymore consider it in our decision making future costs these are costs that are yet to be incurred in a decision when we have future costs uh, they should also be considered as long as they are future and different from alternatives later on we would have that type of cost uh, based on other analytical purposes we have relevant costs we say that the cost is relevant when it is a future cost and a differential cost so that is those are two things that we need to identify when a cost is relevant it should be incurred in the future and it should vary from one decision to another for example if you would uh, purchase a purchase an old book versus purchase a new book what would be the uh, what would be the relevant cost there the purchase price of the new book and the purchase price of the old book what would be the uh, histor what would be a cost that is irrelevant there the uh, the original price of the old book for example uh, when they market it uh, when they market an old book okay i'm selling my old book for only 200 pesos i bought it originally at 500 then uh, you, the new book the price of the new book is 300 which one will you buy oh the new the old book is originally priced at 500 that is expensive no you would consider only the cost of the the selling price of the old book which is 200 and the selling price of the new book which is 300 which one would benefit you considering only the finance uh the finance viewpoint there you should most probably buy the old book because it is cheaper even though it was purchased a long time ago at 500 pesos incremental cost that would be the difference between two alternatives so in that example the new book is 300 the old book is 200 when purchased now the incremental cost is 100 you would save 100 pesos from buying the old book instead of the new book considering that they would have the same utility sunk costs these are past costs that should have that have been already incurred or uh, costs that are irrelevant from one decision to another so what would be the sunk cost in that uh, situation the original price of the old book which is 500 opportunity cost that is the best option for gun value of the best option for gun for gun so if as a result of buying the old book you need to uh you need to you need to have it uh, laminated <laughs> for an additional 50 pesos that is actually an opportunity cost uh on that is an opportunity cost for the new book because you would not have to incur that 50 pesos if you would buy the new book marginal cost would be the cost associated with the next unit or the next project or incremental cost so marginal cost would be uh, would be the cost of additional unit value added cost would be the cost that add value to the product so that actually ends our module so stay tuned for 
a discussion on variable costing and cost estimation.